In the last couple of videos, we're pretty much done with the DQN algorithm implementation. However, before I test the code against Codpo and start training Flappy Bird, I do want to spend some time on optimizing the PyTorch code because that's going to shorten the time required to do training. I'm back at my optimize function where we loop through the batch of experiences and calculate the target Q values for each one of those experiences. In terms of readability, this code is very easy to understand. However, the problem is that we're processing one experience at a time, whereas PyTorch could process the whole batch at once. Since we are likely to run this optimize function millions of times, it's better if we transform this code so that PyTorch can process the batch all at once. So let's replace this code with the more PyTorch way of doing it. Let me delete this, take this out of the indent. Okay, this is much harder to understand, but much more efficient computation-wise. Easiest way to understand what's happening here is to put a breakpoint and then run the code here and examine what's inside each one of these variables. Okay, let's see if we can run this. I'm gonna hit F5. Okay, it stopped right where we put the breakpoint. So let's see what zip star mini batch does. I'm gonna hit F10 to go to the next line. Let me bring up my debug console. Let's see what's in states. Okay, let's see what's in state zero. State zero is our first state. And we got 32 of them. So what's happening is we're taking the mini batch of 32 and extracting them into separate arrays, okay? So if I look at action, it should be the same. We got 32 actions. Now let's see what the difference is after calling stack. Okay, I can't call shape on states because states is a list or a tuple. Let's see what happens after stack. After stacking, it changes our tuple into a two-dimensional tensor. Now I should be able to check the shape. Okay, 32 by four. Remember I mentioned before that the first dimension in PyTorch tensor is the batch dimension. We have a batch of 32 plus our states. So all these stacks are doing the same thing. It's just changing the shape so that we can put it into PyTorch. Now terminations, let's see what termination look like. Termination is a tuple of 32 and it's of type Boolean. All we're doing is converting the Boolean true false into a number. Let's execute it, look at terminations again. Okay, the false become zero and the trues become one. This is useful when we come down to calculate the target function. Instead of the if else from before, we're using this one minus termination. So if termination is true, which is one, one minus one is zero. Essentially, if termination is true, it zeroes out this part. So essentially, we're still doing Q equal reward if new state is terminal. The rest of this is the same. So by stacking everything, we can do this calculation all at one time rather than looping through 32 times. And I have some uh, comment here that kind of breaks down what's happening in between. You can look at this later. Now, let me put a break point here. Hit F5 to continue running. Let me let it calculate the target Q. Uh, let me run it all the way to this line. Now we can take a look at target Q. You can see that it calculated the target Q values for the whole batch of 32. Now for current Q, there's a whole lot of stuff happening right here. So let's do it one step at a time. Let's see what gets outputted from just executing this code. This is 32 sets of Q values here. As we were collecting the experiences, these are the Q values that we saw and we selected actions based on these Q values. We have a list of 32 actions that correspond to each one of these sets of Q values. What we wanna do is to use the list of actions to extract the corresponding Q values that were used when we were collecting the experience. So for the first set, if the action was zero, 
we would extract this negative 0.3 for the second set of Q values. If the action was 1, we would keep negative 0.06. So let me run this line and I'll print out the current Q. Okay, so from the top list, we collected the 32 Q values, the 32 current Q values. Let me print out the target Q. The code at the bottom stays the same. We're passing this current Q into the last function, passing the target Q into the last function. We calculate the loss and do backpropagation. After optimizer.step, the policy network's weights and biases should be adjusted such that the next go around, it should be able to produce numbers closer to the target Q values. Okay, that is pretty much it. We are ready to test the algorithm against Cardpole in the next video. And hopefully if that is successful, we can start training Flappy Bird.